And it's Evan here at Appian World with April, lead developer advocate here at Appian. April, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Evan? I'm doing great. This is my first Appian World. And uh, what do and you think so far? It's fantastic. It's I love the great. energy. The community, as you know, better than anyone, yep. is pretty amazing. Your customers, your partners, it's all here. For the folks uh, listening to this, maybe introduce yourself and your role, your team's role sure thing. at Appian. Yeah, so my name is April Schupel. I'm a lead developer advocate here, and I'm on the greater product evangelist team. And our team is all about um, crafting beautiful experiences for how people experience Appian out in the market. So whether that's um, you know a prospect interested in learning, oh, how does this really work? Mm. Um, or whether that's developers and how they are learning about new features, whether that's people who are interested in getting into Appian and how do I get started? What are the first things that I can work on? Um, so we really focus on making sure that Appian is putting its best first its best first foot forward. Is that the expression? Sure. Um, uh, when it comes to new people first coming in the door and then keeping people excited once they're here. Well, there's a lot of excited people here. That's yeah. for sure. Really, a lot of energy. How did you get into the world of low code software development, and how did you get into Appian? Sure thing. So I, um, I actually studied industrial engineering mm. for a while. I was a consultant at a few different places doing um, implementations of more kind of configuration software, asset management things like IBM Maximo, uh, things like this. And um, every role I wanted to get more and more technical than just those, uh, you know, more easily configurable enterprise applications. Mm. Um, and as I was looking for a new role, I actually, um, Appian found me uh, and, and came into my LinkedIn DMs. Uh, and they were interested in hiring someone for a community and app market lead role, which was kind of a very dynamic catch-all role involved with working with the community site, helping with mm. community support, uh, app market operations. Uh, it was kind of a, a bit of an open-ended job description, but I was eager for a challenge and to learn a lot of new things. And from my first week uh, at Appian in Academy learning the product, from day one, in my experience with years of, of being a consultant doing these implementations, mm. all I kept thinking was, oh my God, if I had this, I wouldn't have had to say no in front of my customers mm. as often as I did, or have to kind of fudge it a little bit, say, oh, we can't quite do it that way, but maybe we can do it this way. Um, with Appian from day one, I was like, wow, you really, anything is possible here. Uh, it's a really great platform to work from. And that only continues to get better with every release. So it's been 24 Appian releases since I started. And I like to say, I think that first project that took me uh, two weeks of learning, I could probably build that application in less than an hour, maybe 30 minutes, just with how far the platform has come at accelerating all those beginner base parts so that um, I can just get into the more interesting challenges. Well, you that had the funnest sense. job. That, that oh, sounds Oh, it's the amazing. best job. I actually uh, actually created this job for myself. So that was my, my old job. I got more involved with hackathons. As I was getting into uh, hackathons, I was doing more research into kind of the developer relations space and mm. realized this is really the focus area I want. At the time, Appian didn't have this role. So I actually you know, put a lot of research together uh, with my old manager and we pitched, hey, all of our competitors, tech companies, they have these developer advocate, developer relations roles. Um, and I want to be the one to do that. Let's get this started. And now we have you know, a larger product evangelism team here. But uh, it's the perfect role because I kind of crafted it for myself. That's, that's, that's awesome. I love that. And what does a typical day or week look like? Not every week can be happy in world. Right. So what, what's a typical day in the life uh, sure. um, with the, working with developers? You know, it's, uh, it's always fun, exciting, different. Um, some of my different focus areas besides events, um, you know, Appian World is obviously the big one. I spend all year preparing for it. But we also have um, smaller regional events mm. that I'll do things at. I also will do dev days at customers um, and kind of visit around there. Uh, I produce a lot of content for our yeah. Appian Community YouTube channel. So I do a variety of live streams to kind of do deep dives into different areas of the product and uh, bring 
people from the community as well as internal product managers on. And I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the face in a lot of ways, but I really just want to use my face to highlight all the amazing people we have in our community. So I try to do that with the Live Build Challenge, with our community YouTube channel, is, is give the developers a chance to just talk about Appian because honestly, the way they talk about it uh, is better than anything we can come up with in our right. own marketing department. You know, That's it's amazing. authentic from the source. Uh, so I work on hackathons, I work on events big and small, I work on the community um, YouTube channel, and then I also work on a variety of projects in the in the background that will eventually help the de developer community, such as things for our uh, you know, community edition experience, our, our free Appian offering. Uh, so we have a new um, Appian community edition that's going to be launching this uh, summer that I'm really excited about. Yes, and so much news this week, obviously, tons of announcements, features, functionality news. What are you excited about this week in particular? In this Appian week World? in particular, I'm excited about the Live Build Challenge and, yeah. and showing, uh, you know, you, you hear in the keynotes um, throughout, but the fun thing about the Live Build Challenge is it's actually showing in action those things that we've been talking about. So mm. some of those new features that you've been hearing about, well, tomorrow, uh, live on stage, you're going to see developers face off head to head trying to build an app using those features for a $30,000 cash prize. So um, really getting Exciting. to... Exciting. Oh, <laughs> it's a party. This is show business, baby. Uh, so it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to you know not just tell but get to show and show in a way that is celebrating our community and highlighting some of the amazing developers that we have out there. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. And talk about AI from your own personal uh, point of view. You know, what does it mean? What what will it mean in in the future? It was a big theme today. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so. I think AI, it kind of in some ways reminds me of Appian and just tech in general continuing to improve, improve, improve. And mm. me saying, you know, I could have built my six years ago, the app I built for Academy, I could build it in an hour now. Mm. That's kind of the same thing with AI, but in some ways just like even more that it's helping us do so much more so that humans can focus on the human parts, right? And I think that's a, a cool thing about the Live Build Challenge and part of the appeal is we are highlighting the humans and they're getting to, to do cool things, um, but using the power of the new technology to help them accelerate uh, so they can you know, focus on some more interesting problems or focus on being more creative with the design elements, um, things like this. So I, I think what excites me about AI is um, what excites me about the Appian platform, as it continues to grow, it makes a lot of the boring stuff easier so I can focus on the more fun and interesting things. Yeah, that, that's a great way to put it. And talk about, you know, massive productivity boost. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So for, for new uh, partners, developers, customers, how do you recommend they dip their toe in the water in this whole low-code journey? How do they get started day one, week one, month one? That's the hardest part, right? Yeah. It's just getting started with a new environment. Absolutely. And, you know, feeling really is believing, right? And getting getting your hands on it. Um, I have been working on this new Appian Community Edition project. Uh, it's going to be launching soon um, that will provide uh, an even better experience for that in your first few days. But we offer uh, a wide variety of content to really enable people on that journey from the beginning and things at different levels, depending on where you are um, and depending on what kind of learner you are. So whether that's reading the docs, um, we have really, really great documentation or whether that's a little bit more like me, I prefer watching YouTube videos mm -hmm. or live streams and things like this. So we also have, you know, we provide the content in a variety of ways. And not only do we provide content, but we also have um, a really strong community where on our community uh, discussions, you can post a question and get an answer so quickly. Or if you're Googling a question, it's probably already been answered on the community. So it's a lot of everyone helping each other. Um, and you know, maybe a shameless plug for my own past live build challenges, but all the prompts for them are up on uh, community as well. So maybe you won't be able in your first week to uh, do it in one hour on mm. stage uh, for the cash prize. A little high pressure, but yeah. it's it's a good way to kind of have a project that you can work towards with acceptance criteria. Because I think ultimately the best way to learn is just start building things. I know for 
Brand new developers, uh, something that I like to tell them is just pick something that you know a lot about or an app that might be mm. helpful to you um, where you don't need to worry about understanding the use case. It's just trying to work on the implementation and, and practice there. So, uh, you know, sometimes the live build challenge, uh, you know, when you're at um, Appian Europe, it was right around the World Cup. So they were building a World Cup portal where you could see the schedules and vote on who oh, you think cool. was going to win. Um, maybe considering our enterprise customers, that's not a, quite a use case that they're going to need to learn. But for a developer to have a fun use case that you can work on that will help you practice the features so that once you get into your day job when you're trying to implement that you know, mission critical application, you will have uh, practiced the skills so that you can then put them to use. So my advice, build something fun. <laughs> That's always good advice. Um, speaking of use cases and projects, do you have any you know, favorite, more memorable projects you, you can uh, point to without, you know, picking favorite children <laughs> that had a big impact, uh, had uh, a significant impact to the and, business or uh, operations or? In terms of like internal projects, customer projects, uh, live yeah, build challenge yeah, the all, sort all, of things. Either or all of the above. All sorts of things. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me think about that for a second. I mean, something that's kind of near and dear to my heart just because mm -hmm. it was my first project um, was, you know, we have a rich app market with a lot of mm -hmm. solutions, plugins to extend the platform, utilities to help developers. Again, it's all about how do I uh, get to a new starting point, right? Mm -hmm. The starting point is not always zero. It's like, oh, suddenly the starting point's 50 and then we have something that helps it be 55, if that makes sense yeah. on, the, on the scale. Um, so just in terms of a a personal favorite, my first project when I joined was building an Appian application that allowed you to submit apps to the app market and uh, controlled that approval process depending on what type of application it was. It needed oh, wow. to go for different approvals. And this is something, right, in terms of the empowerment and feeling, oh my God, I can do anything with this. I built it by myself after having just learned Appian. And this is Literally, you know, our app market that's full of all these great things. This is how everything gets onto it. People can submit um, their descriptions, their, you know, uh, graphical assets, as well as the application packages and the technical bits uh, all along. And it goes to all of the right approval flows. And then afterwards, it gets where it needs to go so that you can, you know, deploy those plugins directly from the product and you can download things directly from the app market. So, just in terms of a, a personal one, the App Market Submissions app, um, you know, that was that, my first baby. <laughs> no, that's, that's fantastic. It's an app store for the enterprise. It's exactly. Brilliant. brilliant. Uh, what are you excited about longer term? I mean, beyond this week, some of the trends over the next one, two, three years. Yeah. Uh, what will Appian World, you know, 2028 look like? Oh, my have goodness. I'm, robots I'm... running around with uh, tele... tele yeah, I mean, I am, or something. I am always um, always trying to think of, of new ideas and, and ways to spice it up and, and where things are going to go. Uh, last night I was having a conversation with someone after one of uh, our quick mini challenges about, oh, what if we had um, kind of an AI bot building, building some part of the application? Uh, so someone came up to me and was saying that had built an AI that could actually, you know, build Appian Appian applications from mm. the ground up, so that could be interesting. Could be your AI, maybe coworker. not a yeah, yeah. coworker exactly. So yeah. taking AI copilot to kind of a, a new level, or um, you know, it's it's been individuals up until this point. This year, it's the first time we're introducing teams, seeing how we can work together. Um, so I think you know the product is continuing to evolve, and uh, personally and as Appian developers uh, in general and in the community, I think that's something that keeps us really excited that we can expect new features. Um, you know, a lot of times, like for example, with record relationships and data fabric, it's something that I hear developers say, oh my God, I didn't know we needed this, but now that I have it, I cannot go back, right? right? right. And so I think it's a combination of those things that you may be expecting or things that are just continuous improvement on what we have. And then so excited to see, hey, what are those new things that, oh, I didn't even know this was possible, and now that we have it, how do we, how do we show it off? So, I, I don't It'll know. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to yeah. see. I'll, I'll pencil that in. 
So you have a really interesting and, and diverse and global customer base. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but there is a, you know, a challenge with women in tech, women in software mm-hmm. development. And um, you're a great spokesman, I think, <laughs> in that regard. How can we a get more? A great spokeswoman. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a spokesperson. But spokesperson, it, yep. How, how can we get a more diverse developer community and you know, is low code a way to do that? It's not as intimidating as yes. when I used to write in C or oh, C plus right? plus. Absolutely, I would say like that is one of the great things about Appian is the um, level of entry is much lower than you know more high code mm. things, but it's still the nature of it being full stack and working with all of the different objects, the process, the back end data, integrations, the front end UI and how people are experiencing it. And from the first moment you're learning, being able to understand how those pieces work together, I think really accelerates the learning. Um, as well as you know, looking out at the Appian community, and even this is a story for myself as well, there are so many amazing Appian developers who don't come from CS backgrounds, who come from, you know, Industrial engineering mm. was my degree. I know people who are math majors, pe- even people who studied philosophy and, mm. and things like this who were able to get into being a developer with the Appian platform. And, um, you know, it it really just makes it a lot more accessible to anyone. Right, and, right. and it's really empowering in that way. And even, you know, looking at the Live Build Challenge contestants this year, we have a, a lot of women, I think, Three of our four teams have, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think now. Uh, we have one team with two women, another team with two women, uh, a team with one woman, and then uh, an all-male team. That's kind but, of unheard of. I go right. to a lot of tech events. And, right. So, <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. And, um, and even looking back to past years, the first year the Live Build Challenge winner was a woman. Last year the Live Build Challenge winner was a woman. So, um, you know, it, it really is just this platform – helps all people from everywhere if they're interested in learning like yeah. Appian is really great at um, you know getting you going really quickly. Right. Well, that's so well said and yeah. thanks so much. We have yeah. two more great days to go. So <laughs> uh, I can't wait. Onwards and upwards. Onwards. Thank you. Thanks. Take care.